So first and foremost, thanks so much for joining. Today's topic is how to calculate and minimize food costs by using restaurant metrics that matter. My name is Matt. I'm the VP of sales here at MarketMan. And for those of you that don't know, MarketMan helps restaurants keep costs under control and efficiently manage their inventory by automating back of house operations. Today's conversation is gonna be about food costs and we're gonna tie in how the MarketMan platform can assist you in getting to those goals. So the biggest reason why restaurants fail is because restaurateurs don't watch their bottom line. There are so many different things going on on a day-to-day -day basis in the restaurant business, flying by the seat of our pants, that we sometimes need to get that back down to basics. And a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be going through today is very basic, very simple, very elementary. But because it's so simple and elementary, it often gets overlooked or forgotten or not followed up with on a weekly or monthly basis. So what are we going to cover in today's session? Number one, why should we calculate food costs? Number two, which of these key metrics are important and how do we calculate them? Number three, how do we leverage what we've learned in these calculations and actually use them to increase our profits? And number four, we'll go through some additional resources like the MarkMath platform, our blog site, and other internal resources that'll help you get started right away and today. So number one, food costs. What is food costs? It's the price that you pay to make your menu items. Now, there are a few different representations of this. You can divide it by recipe, you can divide it by month, you can divide it by restaurant for those multi-unit operators that we have joining today. Uh, but bear in mind, this does not include labor. Labor, that together with food costs, that's your prime costs. That's gonna be the topic of next month's webinar. Today, we're gonna be focusing primarily on your food cost. So number one, we need to talk a little bit about the economics of a recipe. So food cost is far and away the most significant and volatile operational cost that a restaurant has. There are so many different fixed costs like your rent, other costs that are stable and expected, even labor to some extent, but seafood, produce, proteins, the food and beverage that you're purchasing from your external vendors are changing on sometimes a weekly or even daily basis. Uh, number two, food costs should always be calculated as a percentage. And number three, one thing to learn and understand is that food cost is a core metric that gives visibility and control over how much we're spending overall. So in terms of ideal food cost percentages, now, Take these with a grain of salt. We're talking about global averages here. MarketMan does service a network of 6,000 customers across 55 different countries. Uh, platform is translated in 10 different languages, but in sum, if you're within a couple of percentage points of these figures, QSRs and cafes, around 25% food costs, full service restaurants somewhere in the realm of 30 to 35%. If you're doing lower than that, you're in great shape. Fine dining establishments, high end, be under 40% is your target for your food cost and pizzerias somewhere in the 20% range. By leveraging a platform like MarketMan, we hope to save on average somewhere in the realm of two to 5% of your overall food cost just by careful management and automation. Now, let's talk for a quick second about the economics of a recipe. Now, it's very important to understand not only what the cost of the item is that you're selling to your consumer or the, the cost of the products that you're purchasing from your vendors, but how that comes together in a recipe. So using a platform like MarketMan, the first and most important order of business is inventory management. So once we know what we're purchasing our hamburger buns for, how much we're getting our lettuce for, how much we're paying per pound of ground beef, it helps us really itemize and understand all the constituent parts of a recipe. That way, when we itemize it and detail it on a per plate basis, we can truly understand what it costs to make one individual product. So the first measurable that we wanna talk about today is the food cost per recipe. So the food cost per recipe is very simple. It's just how much it costs to prepare that dish over the menu item price times 100. So you're gonna use this cost per recipe to calculate all of your items. 
and really help identify which items are the most profitable. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to keep track of these prices over time to make sure you're meeting your food cost threshold. Now, one of the most common pitfalls for restaurant operators is the week before they open, when they're planning out their menu, they have a great spreadsheet and they plan out exactly what the menu item costs. And guess what? The next week, it's totally out of date. So making sure that you have a living, breathing, ever-changing understanding of your food costs on a per recipe basis is super important. So here's an example. We've talked about that burger. Uh, all in all, it costs us $4.50 to produce that item. Uh, we sell it on the menu for $15. Of course, everyone that's attending today's call knows that I'm speaking to you from our office in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. That's where you'll find these egregiously priced $15 burgers. Uh, but all in all, that's gonna give you a 30% food cost percentage. Now, moving on. The next measurable that you're interested in calculating is your food cost per month. Now, this is most closely resembling your COGS or your gross profitability, but expressed as food cost per month, it's a slightly different measure. Instead of looking at it on a per menu item basis, like the burger and understanding what it costs to make and how much you sell it for, rather we're taking total inventory values and take, putting it over sales. So we open our inventory account at the beginning of the month, tomorrow's uh, October 1st, what do we have in stock? Plus everything that we're buying in the month of October. And then we subtract what we counted at the end of October. We put all of that above our total monthly sales figure and we multiply it by 100 and that gives us our food cost per, per month. The next item for discussion is theoretical food cost. Now, theoretical food cost is what I was alluding to a few minutes ago about what you think your food cost should be according to your target margins in a perfect world with no waste, with no negligence, with no portioning issues, with no theft, with no variations in pricing or anything like that. Um, we hope to get as close as humanly possible to our theoretical food costs week in and week out, menu item by menu item, but we know that that might not be the case. That's why understanding our actual food costs is so important. The actual food cost is the true cost of your dish based on current ingredient prices, usage, waste, and all that type of stuff. So the best way to stay on top of this is by tracking the most commonly used ingredients, top 10 hot item list. Using MarketMan, there's actually a report called the Actual Versus Theoretical Report that we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. That's really very helpful here as well because you can count what you have in stock, what you've purchased, and what you have at the end of the month, and you'll get a comparison summary of what was used versus what the point of sale system says you should have sold. Those numbers are identical, you're in business. But if there is a pretty large disparity between what the POS is reporting that you sold versus what you have in stock, well then you're gonna to wanna to look uh, and take a closer look into waste, into negligence, into theft. Same thing goes for the food cost percentage in and of itself. Um, perhaps we're, those burger patties that we thought were six ounces are truly seven ounces each and every time. Or the slice of cheese that we thought was costing three cents, you know, over the course of time went up and is now costing four cents. So we're gonna to wanna to keep a careful eye on that. So taking a look at an example of uh, food cost per month. Again, it's your value of your opening inventory count at the beginning of the month, the value of everything you've purchased over the course of that month, and then the ending month count is what we're subtracting. We put that over our total monthly sales and we multiply by 100. So we had $1,200 worth of inventory. We purchased $1,000 worth of inventory. We subtracted the ending inventory, which was $1,100. We put that over the $5,000 of monthly sales. We have a 22% overall food cost percentage this month. So what are the challenges? Because I'm sure that almost everybody on this phone call has made these calculations at some point in their life, if not today, right? The 30th of September, the end of the month. Um, I guess the problem is that it's so time consuming, that it's so 
dependent on manual entry and data and numbers and figures that are sometimes really difficult to ascertain on your own. Um, secondarily, keeping track of all those fluctuating prices over the course of time. So that's where Market Man comes in. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the software platform right here. Now I want to actually go into the tips, the tricks, the tactics, how this is going to help you. But just bear in mind that Market Man provides a mobile app on iPhone and Android, tablet, and uh, web app that allows you to take stock counts, submit purchase orders, receive deliveries, scan invoices, calculate recipe costs, integrate with point of sale, and accounting so that you can get, at the click of a button, an automated report that pulls in your sales figures, understands your COGS, right, what you've purchased, and calculates profit. And that can give it to you on a categorical basis, on an inventory item by item basis. So it takes those manual reports and calculations that I was showing you a few slides ago, it really automates it for you right off the bat. A Little bit more about Market Man just to, to dive in. Of course, it's all mobile. So when we were talking about calculating food costs on a menu item by menu item basis, you can really plan and budget your menu items. Uh, you can build out the plated cost, understand sub recipes and preps, and start understanding which items are selling well, but not quite as profitable, and start really understanding the stars of your menu. Next, controlling inventory. Since it's fully integrated with your point of sale, with what's being sold, with, with what's coming in and what's going out, Market Man can give you a clear cut understanding of what you have in stock at any given moment so that you'll understand what you have and what it's worth. So not only can you count, but you can much more easily submit purchase orders based on automated par levels, based on consolidated ordering, and based on just having a one-stop shop for all of your purchases and inventory. Last but not least, all of these inputs have outputs, right? We're not just taking stock counts. We're not just receiving deliveries. The purpose of it is to gain access to a wide variety of different reports that we now don't need to manually build. We'll be able to glean insights and understand our core restaurant metrics to make meaningful business changes based on what we're learning from the software. So let's actually talk about this. What do we do with this data and how do we keep food costs low? Which is really what's keeping everyone here in business. Number one, order based on historical trends. So for, for those of you that have had your restaurants for quite a long time as we're shifting from summer to autumn, we wanna make sure that we're ordering based on what we know meets up with historical demand. If there are different seasonal items that we wanna put on the menu, at different locally sourced ingredients that we want to add into our recipes, uh, different popular alcoholic off offerings like seasonal beers and things like that, take a look at previous reports and get a better understanding of what's popular, what needs to be ordered, and keep track of that. Being able to leverage sales forecasting to get ahead of the weather, of holidays, different trends, so you're not ordering too much or too little. Number two, adapt your menu prices. Now, keeping track of, your, your menu is not a static offering. It's an ever-changing iteration of your business. Not only the items that are being offered, not only the prices that are being sold, but the ingredients the portion sizes, and the suppliers that are providing those products for you. So as we're keeping track of our food costs, as we're understanding who the stars of our menu are, who the plow horses of our menu are, who the dogs of our menu are, unfortunately, we'll become armed with all this information, remove the items that aren't performing as well, supplement the items that are performing very well, and put other items on special when need be but being able to gain access to a wide variety of different reports that show you which menu items are most profitable will be tremendously beneficial. Next, streamline the ordering process. Most of you likely deal with six, seven, eight, nine different food service vendors, produce, seafood, meat, paper goods, cleaning supplies. Um, Likely, you're ordering via phone, via email, on websites, through a rep. Um, but the problem with that is that it's so disparate, separated. Uh, you don't have one single source 
of truth when it comes to how much you're spending, what should be on your budget, what's being received, um, and really a good comparison engine for comparing option A versus option B. So being able to streamline everything in one place, have a consolidated ordering dashboard, and save a tremendous amount of time being able to order your bread and your dairy in one place on one app, that's going to make a world of difference. Number four, save some dough and make your own bread. So I think that uh, one thing that we've learned over the course of the past six or seven months with the, the global changes that have been going on, one of the things that I've seen is a shift to ghost kitchens and um, satellite kitchens and having multi-unit operators working side by side. So if you have uh, three or four different coffee shops in one city, uh, maybe one location that's a little bit larger does all the production for the sake of volume, for the sake of scale, and then transfers the products to other locations or the concept of a commissary kitchen. Bottom line, being able to consider which ingredients in your inventory have their, can cut their costs with just some prep work, um, you'll be able to save some very meaningful dollars and cents at the end of the day. Number five, this is all about waste, but creating daily specials to make sure that you're using your inventory and that nothing is going to waste. So if you have items that are expiring, items that are spoiling, items that have short shelf lives, please be sure to create daily or weekly special menu items to make sure that you're getting rid of what's going bad. Um, I know that it's a little bit more difficult now that a lot of us don't have in-store dining uh, to push those specials, to have wait staff promote them as daily specials, but there are so many creative ways via all of your mobile ordering apps to prominently feature those daily specials and get them sold and clear out your inventory. Now, other than putting things on special, we do really want to be cognizant of minimizing waste. Um, so number one, reduce spoilage. Please keep a careful and watchful eye over how everything is keeping in your storage units and your walk-ins. Um, times are a little bit different now. Things are unpredictable. We've had many, many years of sustainable, predictable business, but over the course of the past six months, uh, with the shift to mobile ordering, the shift to pickup, uh, the shift to curbside dining and various cities having different opening strategies, keeping track of what you have in stock and what could potentially be going bad soon becomes an even more important because we're not following the standard trends. Number two, prep smarter so that you can save more. Um, maybe those, those spoiling um, bananas or avocados can be made into a smoothie. Number three, control your portion sizes. And number four, most importantly, waste is inevitable but the best type of waste is the waste that we know about. So as long as we're keeping a watchful eye over what is going to waste and understanding and entering it in, even if it's something as simple as a pen and paper clipboard so that we know who threw what away, what's spoiling, how much of it and what it was worth, that'll give a really clear cut understanding of where we need to curtail production, where we should be ordering less and where we can be saving time and money. Uh, using Market Man, what most folks do is at the end of each day, take out their mobile app, they'll enter in the products that have spoiled or have gone to waste or have been thrown away. And Market Man will automatically categorize for you based on type, based on date, based on week, and based on reason. So you can see if something was dropped, something was broken, something spoiled, it was the end of the day. That way, you can keep track of who's throwing things away and get a tangible dollar value over what is actually going in the trash. Um, moving on, Q&A. Uh, I'd like to invite everyone to just ask some questions in the group chat over here and we'll answer them in the order that they are received. Some of them are coming into me privately, some of them are coming in publicly. Um, I see that, I think that we're gonna invite John in to ask some of the questions. Cool, thank you so much, Matt, for that presentation. Uh, and 
like Matt said, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A panel on the bottom of your Zoom, uh, and we'll get to them. Uh, so the first question that we received today is, what's the difference between food cost versus margins? Okay, good question. They're in fact two sides of the same coin. Food cost is if your burger costs $3 and you sell it for $10, you have a 30% food cost, right? 30% is the cost of production. The margin is the other side of it, right? It's the $7 of profit. It's the 70% margin. So two sides of the same coin just depends on how you want to report it. Cool. Um, and we have a question from Mara. She says, as a newer restaurant, I opened January 8th, 2019. With this shutdown, how, how do I expect that, uh, how do you expect that to affect market man forecasting for my business? Great question. So, of course, with very limited amounts of historical information, it becomes difficult to accurately forecast. But that's when we start going from a macro view into a micro view. And we start looking on month to month figures, week to week figures, even day to day figures. So we can figure out what's being wasted the most, what's being used the most, what's being sold the most. And with MarketMan, not only are you getting a software platform, you're getting a professional service. Everyone gets assigned an onboarding specialist. Everyone gets assigned a customer success manager. And that's kind of like getting a mini consultant free of charge for your business because they'll help walk you through those details, that data, those reports to make suggestions based on their experience working with hundreds of other restaurants that are similar to yours. Cool. Uh, another question we received is, how often should you be taking inventory counts? So that's a personal preference. Uh, I've seen restaurants take inventory once in the morning, once at night. I've seen restaurants take inventory once per quarter. Uh, it's totally up to you. I would recommend taking counts weekly. That's the most common measure. And then for your problem items or your very high cost items, high margin items, you can create a sub list or a hot sheet, if you will, to take just a category by category count or these 10 specific items that I really want to pay careful attention to. And you can take those once per day, a couple of times per week, one of the appeals of market man is that you're not locked into a specific schedule. You can take monthly counts, you can take weekly counts, you can take counts based on category, counts based on storage area, or just uh, any customized count that you'd like. Cool. Uh, the next question we received is, how can market man help me understand my actual versus theoretical costs? Sure, absolutely. So what we're going to look at over there are three main reports in market men. Number one, the menu profitability report. Number two, the COGS and gross profits report. And number three, the actual versus theoretical report. So the actual versus theoretical report has to do with individual inventory items and how they're used in the system. For anybody that wants to learn more about this, I urge you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one product demonstration with one of the market man specialists, and they'll take you through from top to bottom everything that you need to know about market man in a live demonstrating environment, how to take counts, how to place orders, how to receive deliveries, how to build recipes, and then how to dive into some of those reports. For example, the actual versus theoretical, which is going to compare what you've counted, what you've purchased, what you're ended with, and how that compares to what your point of sale system says you should have sold. Great. Uh, I think we have one last question here. It's, sure. How often should you be calculating food costs? That's a great question. And again, it, it's totally up to you. But more often, the better, especially if you're just getting started, especially if you have problem areas in your business, especially if, you know, during these times where there are so many different fluctuations, uh, you want to be calculating it on at least a monthly to weekly basis so that you can get ahead of the curve and intervene before it's too late. Um, if you're a well-established, mature business that's resting on your heels in, in terms of profitability, you can take your foot off the gas and you know, maybe not check it as often, um, but you'll definitely want to be checking it at least 
on a monthly basis, if not on a weekly basis. And using a platform like MarketMen, you have a bird's eye view to check in on it day to day, getting alerts and notifications when items become more or less profitable so that you don't have to take an active role seeking out problem areas, but rather you can play a more passive and reactive role getting notified when it's time for you to intervene. Great, great. Well, I think that's all of the questions that people had to ask for today. I wanna to thank everybody so much for your time. It was really a pleasure uh, chatting and going through all of this. Uh, like I said, we're gonna make this available online. We're gonna send through the recording. Um, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to call in. You can feel free to email me directly. Uh, you can schedule a demo on our website. We'll loop you in with one of our product specialists. You can answer any questions about just generalized restaurant food costs that you have, or as it relates to market, I'd be happy to take you through a product demonstration and show you how it might work for your business. So thanks so much for the time today, guys. Really appreciate it and have a great day.